I know some of you wonder what the Government Affairs Committee or the Legislative Committee does. Uh, I often wonder that myself. Twelve years ago, when I got my license and, uh, and came to work in the real estate business, that was one of the things that started to tweak my interest, you know, what do they do and how do they do it? And, and having been involved a little bit in legislative affairs, I said, I'm going to go to some of the meetings and join the committee. Well, I went to a couple, wasn't real happy. You know, a couple people did their thing, and I came home and told Daddy, I said, well, don't need to go there again. I said, because you don't get to say what you want to say or do anything. So years passed, and I got on other committees at the board. And last year, uh, I know the uh, Will asked me to, to be a, Ann Marconi's assistant on the Government Affairs Committee. So I said, well, this will be a good opportunity to learn something. And I followed Ann around for a year. And last year was an exciting year because we had all the national elections. And one of the things that we do as a Government Affairs Committee is we interview all of the candidates, whether it be local, local, I mean down to the, to the school boards, all the way to the federal level. And uh, by doing that, we have an opportunity to find out exactly where the candidates stand on issues that protect our rights and our all the citizens of our Tri-County area's rights. And I would encourage all of you to participate in that. The message always comes out when we got an interview schedule, whatever it might be. Uh, we have, uh, comes out on the uh, MLS homepage. You can, you can find that, probably will come out on the new website any when the meetings are scheduled and whom we're gonna interview at that particular time. But you know, it's very, very important because we look at issues that quality of life issues. You know, we've, we've made some inroads in the last year as far as uh, dealing with our, our local politicians. And we do, we do not only local politicians, but state. And uh, I see, you know, as Nick will attest in the back, and uh, we, we talked about uh, point of sale last year. A lot of you know that, that, was, that was paramount on, on our agenda as far as a local issue was concerned in the state. Through Nick and, and, and Cash and Didier, who was is the legislative liaison, I think is her, her title to the to the state legislature. They worked extremely hard, along with a lot of the, the local folks, to lobby the the legislature on getting this bill point of sale passed. Well, it passed the House of Representatives without too much of an issue. It, it was a long deal. It got to the Senate. We all hoped that it was going to pass the Senate. Of course, we all know sort of some of the things that happened at the last hours of the Senate uh, when they got the stimulus situation going and whether the governor was going to take the stimulus money and they got in a big, uh, it, it just took up a lot of time. Well, the best thing that happened, they didn't vote on it in the Senate, so we didn't get it passed, but it did get is what we call a point of order, which means that there was only like four different bills that got on that list that they have to act on it when they come back in January. So we're hoping that through your efforts, the grassroots efforts, that you will then contact your local folks. All the local senators on our local delegation have signed on to the bill. They said they will support it. But we need to let them know how appreciative we are of their doing that because some of them can change their mind between now and January. So we need to keep on top of that because it is a tremendous issue on sales. It's, it's, it's hurt not only the residential sales, but it's hurt the commercial sales as well in our, in our business. And why, you know, why do we... Would you clarify, please, what the new commission is going to do with the point of changing the current point of sale? Point of, point of sale, what we're... In, short terms, what we're trying to do is go back to the old way on the assessed value to, come to do the 15% appraisal every five years. And based on that, now most of you know it's whatever the sales price is, is what it's assessed at. And, and it's not, you know, it's killed the condo market. Uh, Ory County, Myrtle Beach area has really been hurting because of that. Um, you know, we stay in touch with all of the, the realtors and Ryan Castle, as we recognized Ryan earlier, uh, is our, our legislative liaison on, at the local uh, committee. He goes 
along with a lot of uh, us to different planning commissions, to town council meetings. You'll see Ryan at every meeting you go to. And that we do that to keep in touch because we, as an organization, want the politicians to come to us as their reference point for any issues that deal with real estate. And, and we've getting, we, we're now getting a lot of that. They, they look to it because they see us at the meetings. They then come back to the, to the board and uh, to our organization and ask what it is, what's happening, what can we do to help you, and those kind of things. But I can't overemphasize the importance of you participating in those candidate screenings because you're the people out there that's going to vote for them all those folks, and, and we need to establish a position from the Board of Realtors that we support those particular candidates. I know uh, President McMillan indicated about, talked about the $8,000 tax credit. You know, like he said, that's not over. We need to keep the pressure on, uh, particularly at the federal level, uh, for that to, uh, to pass. Um, we need to, you know, talk, mention health insurance. I think through the, the efforts of our, our state organization, uh, they've made arrangements whereby in South Carolina that, that Realtors can get health insurance. So if you have questions on that, you call Nick or somebody else, and I know a lot of people are taking advantage of that. So it's just a lot of things that we do in government affairs that sort of go by the wayside. And, and I'd like to thank all of those folks who are here who have participated in the last couple of years, actually, on all the candidate screenings, because I can tell you it's very interesting. Uh, you find out very quickly those politicians that will support you and those that won't, they'll tell you right up front. So it's a very interesting um, process to go through. I think we're going to entertain questions, so if we go through that, uh, we'll take questions later. Thank you.